the Manhattan District Attorney's Office in the criminal case where Trump was convicted on 34 separate felony counts has just filed its briefing telling Justice Mershon to keep the gag order on Donald Trump and also discussing the threats that the district attorney's office has faced as a result of Donald Trump's conduct, thus necessitating the gag order to remain in effect. There's a slight modification that the district attorney's office is willing to concede, but otherwise they want a strong, robust gag order to remain imposed on Donald Trump. And the district attorney's office is also in this briefing debunking all of the conspiracies and the lies and the politicization of the proceedings that Donald Trump is attempting to do in Donald Trump's briefing. I think what's important to note about the district attorney's brief is that it calls out all of the threats that the district attorney's office and its staff has faced as a result of Donald Trump's behavior, and especially the recent threats that have ramped up after Donald Trump was convicted and during the pendency of the criminal trial as a result of Donald Trump's behavior. Let's start with that, then we'll talk about this overall briefing that was just filed by the district attorney's office. Uh, in this briefing, page seven, it says, the threat situation documented in detail in the people's earlier filings has only intensified in the intervening months. According to an updated affidavit from New York Police Department Sergeant Nichols Pastilli in 2024, they have logged an additional 61 actionable threats against the district attorney, his family, and staff of the district attorney's office. With 56 of those 61 threats, over 90% having been received in the months of April, May, and June 2024. And to be clear, those aren't just random threats. Those are actionable threats that would be resulting in not just an investigation, but potential criminal action against those who were threatened. Real present threats to the lives. I mean, all threats should be taken seriously, but these were actionable threats as well. It goes on to say that number does not include the nearly 500 threatening emails and phone calls received by the district attorney's office just since April 2024 that were forwarded for security review and that the Office of Security is not tracking as threat cases. Just think about that, that with all of the threats that are flooding into the district attorney's office as a result of Donald Trump's conduct, they have to make these decisions of, which death threats are actionable and clear and present danger threats and which types of death threats and calls and emails should kind of be triaged and not taken as seriously. That's how many threats are coming into the district attorney's office. It goes on to say the recent threat activity directly connected to is directly connected to defendants dangerous rhetoric about this prosecution includes bomb threats at the homes of two people involved in this case on april 15 2024 the first day of trial it includes threatening posts disclosing the home address of district attorney employee involved in the prosecution it includes an online post discussing <clears throat> depicting sniper sites on the people involved in this case or a family member of such person. By the way, here is a photo of that right now. And it includes other recent online posts and communications directed to the district attorney or the district attorney of New York employees involved in this prosecution that quote, we will kill you all and that you should be in witness protection and that your life is done. So it was important that the district attorney say, here's why a gag order was necessary to protect the integrity of these proceedings. Sentencing is still scheduled for July 11th, and for the integrity of proceedings, we need to keep the gag order in place because this is the type of conduct that Donald Trump is engaged in. Then the district attorney's office says, look, the jury needs to be protected. That is obvious. And Donald Trump has shown a tendency to attack juries 
if the gag order is released on the jurors, on the specific juror, Donald Trump will undoubtedly go after them. That's his MO. That's what he and his MAGA people do. And he will place their life and jeopardy in risks. And so make sure the jury remains protected. Um, then make sure that the uh, court staff, the district attorney staff, uh, family members are protected. That, of course, needs to be done at least through sentencing as these proceedings are still taking place and we need to protect the integrity of the proceedings. This motion states what the district attorney's office said, and if you go back to some of the last videos I did, I predicted that this is what the district attorney would say, is that as it relates to witnesses, because the witnesses are not going to be called anymore in this case, the gag order as it relates to witnesses like Stormy Daniels, Michael Cohen, and others, that gag order as it relates to them um, could be lifted. However, if Donald Trump engage in, engages in threatening and harassing conduct, he should be criminally prosecuted under harassment and threatening and, and threat uh, related statutes is what uh, uh, the district attorney's office says to Justice Mershon. So keep the gag order for the jury, keep the gag order for uh, court staff, judges, family, uh, other members of the district attorney's team other than the district attorney. Remember, the gag order doesn't apply to the judge, um, just family members. And that's what's necessary to protect the integrity of the proceeding is what the district attorney's office is arguing here. What if you could support family farmers and reduce your environmental imprint all while enjoying the highest quality meat on earth? When you join the Moink movement, you can. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. Moink farmers farm like our grandparents did, and as a result, Moink meat tastes like it should because the family farm, let's face it, does it better. And the Moink difference is a difference you can taste. Unlike the supermarket, Moink gives you total control over the quality and source of your food. You choose the meat delivered in every box, like ribeyes, to chicken breast, to pork chops, to salmon fillets, and much more. Plus, you can cancel at any time. Moink is helping save rural America. I love it, and you will too. Join the Moink movement today. Shark Tank host Kevin O'Leary called Moink's bacon the best bacon he's ever tasted, and Ring Doorbell founder Jamie Siminoff jumped at the chance to invest in Moink. Plus, they guarantee you'll say, oink, oink, I'm just happy I got Moinked. I know I do, and you will too. Keep American farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash Midas Touch right now. And listeners of this show get free bacon for a year. That's one year of the best bacon you'll ever taste, but for a limited time. It's spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Midas Touch. That's moinkbox.com slash Midas Touch. It goes on to say, the people oppose defendant's motion to immediately and entirely terminate the court's order restricting his extrajudicial statements. The court entered those orders to protect three narrowly defined categories of participants in this criminal proceeding from defendant's inflammatory public attacks. The appellate division agreed that these narrow restrictions were appropriate to protect the fair administration of justice in criminal cases and to ensure that participants to the criminal proceeding remain free from threats, intimidation, harassment, and harm. So there, Alvin Bragg, the district attorney's office, is saying, look, the appellate division uh, agreed with the basis for the gag order. It then goes on to say, and just two days ago, the Court of Appeals, New York's highest court, dismissed defendant's attempt to appeal from the appellate division order, quote, upon the ground that no substantial question, no substantial constitutional question is directly involved. Remember, we did a video here on the Midas Touch Network covering the order by the highest court in New York, which in New York is called the Court of Appeals, what would normally be a state's Supreme Court. New York calls its highest court the Court of Appeals, and they rejected Donald Trump's appeal, and they said there's not even substantial constitutional questions for us to even get involved in this thing. The gag order stays in place. Then the district attorney's office says, look, as a preliminary matter, 
Um, oh, it says defendants demand that this court precipitously end these protections even before the sentencing hearing on July 11th is overstated and largely unfounded. As a preliminary matter, many of defendants' complaints simply ignore the narrowness of the court's order. As the people have previously explained, nothing in the order prohibits defendant from broadly criticizing the verdict, the criminal proceeding, the district attorney, this court, and more. And indeed, defendant has engaged in a flood of such criticisms both during and after the trial and after the guilty verdict. Defendant thus incontestably retains ample leeway to engage in a significant amount of speech to respond to defendants' opponents and adversaries, including President Biden and his campaign staff, his surrogates, the White House press secretary, Robert De Niro. Instead, the limited purpose of the gag order was to protect certain participants in the criminal proceeding from threatening, inflammatory, and denigrating statements by defendant that this court found would risk impeding the orderly administration of this court. Thus, the relevant question is not whether the orders prevent defendant from speaking freely about the case. They never have. He's free to speak freely about the case but instead whether there is reason to preserve the order's narrowly tailored protections on specific participants in the criminal proceeding. As explained below, th those reasons still exist for several of the order's protections, but not all. Not all meaning the district attorney's office is okay with the gag order being lifted on witnesses now that they're no longer witnesses in the case, but keep it on all of the other uh, uh, groups that were subject to the gag order, which is just the jury, court staff, and family members of the, of the court staff and the district attorney's team and their family members. But then the district attorney's office says, look, before turning to those arguments, the people note that defendant's motion once again includes a number of categorically false accusations. Trump's lying in his motions. For example, defendant claims that the district attorney is acting in concert with defendant's electoral opponent and an unspecified cast of associates in an effort to restrict defendant's speech at an upcoming presidential debate. Defendant offers no factual basis for this assertion and there is none. The claim is a lie. Defendant likewise asserts that the district attorney's efforts to delay filing an opposition to this motion are transparently political and shameful and suggests that the moment that the motive for any delay was to defer the court's consideration of the motion until just after the presidential debate. But defendant never objected to the briefing schedule proposed by the people, and it is again false that the people were motivated in any way by defendant's campaign schedule. As explained in our letter response, the people simply proposed adopting the existing schedule that the court had already decided was appropriate for all other post-trial motions. In other words, the court set a schedule for the length of time for uh, motions, oppositions, and replies. We were following that. Donald Trump never opposed the briefing schedule, but now whines and claims that the briefing schedule over his request to lift the gag order was intended to hurt him at the debate, which we always said was going to be one of Donald Trump's excuse. But Donald Trump's lawyers never objected to that schedule. They accepted that schedule and now are whining about the schedule that they accepted. These knowing falsehoods are just the latest example of defendants' patent disrespect for the rule of law and the impartial administration of justice. Similarly, irresponsible attacks by a defendant led this court to issue orders restricting defendants' extrajudicial statements and to define the defendant in criminal contempt for willfully violating those orders 10 times during the trial. As defendants' continued conduct makes clear, the need to protect participants in the criminal proceeding and the integrity of the criminal justice process from defendants' attack remains critically important. Then it goes over protect the jurors or Donald Trump's going to go after them, um, especially before sentencing. And then uh, the prosecution and court staff and their families but then says the trial witnesses, um, the gag order as it relates to them can be terminated. So there you have it. 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Thanks for watching and have a good one. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.